is brought to you by Head Start Basketball. Hey, hoop heads. I wanted to take a minute to shout out our partners and friends at Dr. Dish Basketball. Their Dr. Dish shooting machines are undoubtedly the most advanced and user-friendly machines on the market. Sign up now for their virtual camp 2.0 featuring 10 days of workouts with pro trainers from the Dr. Dish family. Learn more at drdishbasketball.com and follow their incredible content at Dr. Dish B-Ball on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Mention the Hoopheads podcast and save an extra $300 on the Dr. Dish Rebel, All-Star, and CT models. Visit drdishbasketball.com for details. That's a great deal, Hoopheads. Get your Dr. Dish shooting machine today. Hi, this is former NBA player CJ Watson, and you're listening to the Hoop Heads Podcast. Prepare like the pros with the all-new Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Fast Draw has been the number one play diagramming software for coaches for years. You'll quickly see why Fast Model Sports has the most compelling and intuitive basketball software out there. For a limited time, Fast Model is offering new subscribers 10% off Fast Draw and Fast Scout. Just use the code SAVE10 at checkout to grab your discount, and you'll be on your way to more efficient game prep and improved communication with your team. Fast Model also has new coaching content every week on its blog, plus play and drill diagrams on its play bank. Check out the links in the show notes for more. Fast Model Sports is the best in basketball. Hello and welcome to the 32nd edition of the Coach's Corner Roundtable on the Hoopheads podcast. Each episode of the Coach's Corner Roundtable will feature our all-star lineup of guests answering a single basketball question. A new Coach's Corner Roundtable will drop around the 15th of each month. August Roundtable question is, how do you help your players improve their mental toughness? Our coaching lineup this month includes Eric Bueller from Chatfield High School, Chris Delisio from Olmsted Falls High School, Liz Kay from Wakona High School, Dan Madhavapalil from University at Albany, Hari Mananen, coach and author from Finland, Aaron Meyer from 1909 Vintage Basketball Apparel, Kyle Pennington from Russellville High School, Del Leonard from Mountain Home High School, Don Showalter from USA Basketball, John Shulman from the University at Alabama Huntsville, Joe's Decision from Unleashed Potential, and Lee Swanson from Bunker Hill High School. Please enjoy this roundtable episode of the Hoopheads podcast, and once you're finished listening, please give the show a five-star rating and review after you subscribe on your favorite podcast app. If you're a basketball coach at any level, please check out our Hoopheads coaching mentorship program. You'll get matched with one of our experienced head coaches and develop a relationship that will take your coaching, your team, your program, and your mindset to another level. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Hoopheads Pod for the latest updates on episodes, guests, and events from the Hoopheads podcast. Let's hear from our coaches about how they help their players improve their mental toughness. Eric Bueller, Chatfield Senior High School, Littleton, Colorado. Hey, what's going on, Hoopheads? This is Eric Bueller at Chatfield Senior High. And this month, we were asked how we work with our players on their mental toughness. And I think we do a few things to help our, our guys out with their own mental toughness. Uh, a big thing that I think is important for us is we talk about it a lot. Uh, we definitely talk about it a lot more than we talk about our physical toughness. Um, because as we all know, um, you can be a very physically tough team, but if you don't have the mental toughness to go along with it, it's kind of null and void. Um, we talk a lot about, we talk a lot about it after games, during half times, um, after practices, scrimmages, things like that, just about what we could have improved or moments where, um, either our mental toughness showed out or where our mental toughness was lacking. And we, we like to shine light on those situations. So our players actually know what it looks like. Um, then I think another big thing we do is is we try to create those situations where mental toughness needs to come into play in practices. Uh, usually where we're coming back from a huge disadvantage or um, one of our better players is out of a game or we have to come back in a scrimmage, things like that, just so they get used to the mindset of like this is possible 
uh, and um, what is needed to do, what our focus needs to be with our mental toughness. And then finally, something that we're getting better at. I wouldn't say we're great at it yet, but it's working on those one-on-one relationships where you can tell a player is struggling with some mental toughness things, um, pulling them aside in practice after games, and and just pointing out some things they can improve and uh, things that we're seeing as coaches that they can add to their game or will improve their game on the mental side of things. So um, that's what we do. Uh, Thanks for having me on again, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Chris Delisio, Olmstead Falls High School, Olmstead Falls, Ohio. Hey, Hoopheads. Chris Delisio here, Olmstead Falls. Uh, when helping players improve their mental toughness, I think that's definitely got to be something as a coach that you mix into your practice plan, that you have uh, as an intentional thing that you're trying to do, whether it's during shooting drills, I think is a great opportunity to do it, to talk about the mental approach and, and not worrying about misses, things like that. Uh, or if you're just sending that message, maybe pre-practice or post-practice. But I think that, you know, that's something that the coach has to really make sure that they're consciously putting into their plan of attack and, and talking about the different types of mental toughness that happens. You know, we spend maybe six, eight minutes on rebounding drills or passing drills or other things. Um, Sometimes we don't want to give up practice time, you know, with some other things that we don't think are going to help our team. But when it really comes down to it, I think that um, getting those messages across and helping our players have a perspective about how to be mentally tough in different situations is going to be as impactful or even more uh, than maybe doing some of those other drills. So I think, Definitely getting in your practice plan has got to be a key for you. Liz K from Wakona High School in Dalton, Massachusetts. Hi, everyone. This is Liz K from Wakona Regional High School in Dalton, Massachusetts. And to answer this month's roundtable question on how to develop a player's mental toughness, I would have to say that the first thing you have to think about would be sort of your definition of toughness. And In conversations with Coach Showalter, one thing he talks about a lot with toughness is that you can know a player is tough, but not really be able to define it. Um, And so for him, and and I I wish I could take credit for it, but he basically says, you know, it's a player who can do the right thing at the right time. Um, Someone who makes game-changing plays. And that can be in the physical realm or the mental realm, but with regards to mentality, I would have to say that the the three things that I think are most important in mental toughness would be uh, connectedness, support, and preparedness. Um, So for example, when we develop uh, physical and mental toughness, obviously you can can do uh, several things in practice to develop these things. Um, Our players always feel like they're more prepared than other teams, uh, and that gives them confidence. So when we talk about end-of-game situations or making game-changing plays, uh, situational basketball is something that we do um, all the time in practice, at least once a day, if not for an entire practice during the week. And so therefore, our players are very comfortable um, in high-stress situations, knowing that they're already prepared to make the right play uh, without thinking too much about it. Um, The other piece of that, obviously, is that things might go might go wrong. There has to be some level of resilience as well. And so when we talk about uh, support and connectedness, not only support from the coaching staff, um, but also teammates and therefore feeling connected to everybody um, to have the ability to make those mistakes and be resilient, Um, because obviously in in today's world, there's more judgment than ever um, with regards to outside uh, forces as well as inside the gym. So we try to make everything as um, sort of supportive and, uh, you know, okay as possible to make mistakes along the way um, in the hopes that that then translates into learning uh, not only on the court, but off the court as well. So um, again, some things we think of when we talk about mental toughness, uh, please make time for those uh, game-changing plays in practice, end-of-game situations, quick hitters, etc. so they're already comfortable. 
create a connectedness and supportive uh, nature within your organization. Um, and hopefully this will help improve not just physical toughness, but also the mental toughness that's needed to be successful. Thanks, everyone. Dell Leonard, Mountain Home High School, Mountain Home, Arkansas. Dell Leonard, Mountain Home, Arkansas. The question for this Hoop Heads Roundtable is, how do you help players improve their mental toughness? We believe that you just make practices harder than games. Practices need to be uh, really competitive Use time and score in your drills and your practice as much as possible to create competitiveness. Create situations in practice where players go head to head and, and try to beat each other. If the players, you know, if they're not competing against each other, um, have them compete against the clock, uh, trying to get a certain score in a drill before the time runs out on the clock. And then, again, as far as competing against each other, play one-on-one, -on -one, especially early in the year. Uh, Gino Ariema said that you can tell a lot about a player in a one-on-one -on -one drill. And just try to expose players to tough situations rather than avoiding them. Uh, if a coach avoids a tough situation, say because they're afraid that they have a talented player or maybe a team that, that can't handle it or – Maybe that coach just doesn't want to deal with an uncomfortable situation. I, I believe we see that way too often anymore, and I think that that coach is doing injustice to his players. Um, I believe a coach's job is to constantly put players in demanding situations through competition in order to help them learn how to deal with those moments that do require mental toughness. When, when players or teams have those setbacks and, and failures that occur in practice or games, as coaches, we have to help them understand that those things are natural and they're going to deal with a lot tougher situations later in life. Um, more so, those learning moments are really important and they're needed as part of the, the mental toughness developmental process. And I think if we can get, get players to look at tough times, as if, if they'll understand that those times are as valuable as those confidence-boosting moments, when they achieve their goals without, you know, when, without going through tough times, players won't have the opportunities to become mentally tougher and they have to learn how to handle those tough moments or those tough games or the important lessons will never be learned. The difference between the mental, the mentally weak basketball player and the mentally tough basketball player, in my opinion, is not really whether or not they have, both experienced adversity. I think the difference is how they go about handling it. And that process most often falls back on the coach on how to teach the player how to handle it. So in closing, just put players in tough situations and teach them and educate them how to handle those situations. And I think the teaching part and educating them on how to handle situations, that's, that's the part where you know, they know you care about them and you don't le let them leave necessarily, you know, after having a bad day type deal. You just educating on, on how important those moments are. Dan Madhavapalil, men's assistant basketball coach at the University at Albany. This is Dan Madhavapalil with U Albany Men's Basketball answering this month's roundtable question. How do you help players improve their mental toughness? I absolutely love this question. Most people say the game is 90% mental. However, we rarely spend that much time on it. When someone is playing well, we often hear people say that they are in the zone. Well, actually psychologists refer to this as the flow state. And being in the flow state is described as being in the present moment to moment to moment. One of the best ways to live in the present moment is to focus on the breath. If you want to make it a practice every single day before a team huddle, have everyone take a deep breath. Before a free throw, take a deep breath. Any stop action, tell your players, take a deep breath. Because most people play the game with one foot in the past and one foot in the future, and they often mess up the present. Take a deep breath, focus on the present moment, be in the zone. 
Kari Mananen, coach and author from Finland. By definition, team games are, games are firstly played by teams and only secondarily by its individual players. So firstly, it's the basketball team that should be mentally tough, not the individual players. The players are never left on their own. Rather, together they learn how to be mentally tough, or how to function resiliently as a unit. This mental toughness or resilience is developed through resili resiliently practicing useful skills and capabilities. The coach's job is to interview whenever the team's resilience starts to crack. The coach needs to create hope or a purpose or some constraints that get the players back on track. Are you tired of slipping and sliding on the court and sticky sheets just aren't giving you grip? Grip Spritz solves this problem without having to lick your hand to clean your shoes. Grip Spritz is used by countless AAU, high school and college programs, semi-pro teams, as well as NCAA athletes and G League players. Unlike other products, Grip Spritz has solutions for individual players not just entire teams. We've used Grip Spritz at our Head Start basketball camps and players love it. To keep you and your team from slipping and sliding, visit gripspritz.net to learn more. Aaron Meyer from 1909 Vintage Basketball Apparel. For me, the best players in the world are the ones that aren't don't just excel with their skills, but are the most consistent players. So helping players improve their mental toughness would involve helping them to form habits related to strengthening their mental toughness and supporting their mental health. It's the frontier for coaches and players, the 21st century. I know when I started high school, we barely had a weight room, but our coaches pieced it together and taught us how to utilize the weights for strength training and conditioning. And most importantly, they added these times into the practice schedule. They didn't just tell us to use the weights they set up uh, and, and strategize with us so that we could set goals and make improvements and i think the same can and should be done with mental health and toughness now it would depend on where my team was at with their own practices for new players i think that they would need time to explore what their mental health exercise is going to entail meditation yoga mindfulness prayer positive self-talk self-reflection etc once we've established what the individual players are going to take on or what we're going to do as a collective if we decide to go that route, then I think tracking becomes important. You can use an app like Headspace or track it on a shareable document. But the key is to turn something that's helpful into something that's a daily practice. What I enjoy about basketball is the meditative quality of it, but I had to learn when things weren't going well to let go and enjoy the rest of life around the game. <laughs> what I didn't realize at the time is that the ability to be present in the, in the moment also helped me within the game as well. It's often said, but so true, if I could take my brain and put it in my high school body, I'd be a much better player. But I hope that my willingness to help players form mental toughness and health habits will get them to where I am during their playing days. Kyle Pennington, Russellville High School, Russellville, Arkansas. Kyle Pennington, head boys basketball coach, Russellville High School in Russellville, Arkansas. This month's roundtable question was how do you help players improve their mental toughness? To me, this is such a loaded question that can be answered in so many ways. In our program, one of the biggest things we talk about is our will versus their will. We're not going to allow other teams to break our will. No matter what's going on during the game, whether we're up 10, down 10, in a tight ball game, best players in foul trouble, any situation, we're not going to allow the other team to break our will. We build on this throughout the year with toughness drills and exercises. In today's world, it's so important to train the mind just as it is to train the body. We give reminders daily to not break our will. We conduct situational drills, and then a huge part of mental toughness is the weight room. It's a proven fact no matter what sports you play. If you're consistent in the weight room, it's not going to only help you physically, but also mentally. Don Showalter, USA Basketball. 
Hi, Don Showalter here with USA Basketball. And the question for this month is, uh, how do you improve your players' mental toughness? Uh, I think there's a, a lot of ways to do that, but I think the number one way in practice is to have a lot of drills where they compete with each other and there's a, there's a win or a loss. And then the winners, uh, obviously, uh, get a drink of water or whatever, and the losers have to maybe run uh, uh, one sprint or whatever just to give them some semblance that, hey, you know, winning and losing is important. Uh, but mental toughness can also come from daily activities, uh, being organized, coaches being extremely organized in their practices, I think develops mental toughness uh, with players. And they see uh, you being organized. I think it gives them some really semblance of uh, toughness to their game as well. John Shulman, University of Alabama Huntsville and the 720 Sports Group. Yes, this is John Shulman, head basketball coach at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Um, the question is, how do you help your players uh, improving their mental toughness? Um, hard one. Um, hopefully they have unbelievable mental toughness um, when they get to college. Um, if they're not mentally tough, it's going to be hard for them to play in college. But how can we improve? And then, you know, I did coach in high school. How can you help and improve those guys uh, if they're not mentally tough? Because if you ain't mentally tough, I am assuming you would be called mentally soft. And so I think the first thing you have to do is you have to challenge them. Uh, you've got to challenge them. It, it can't be in, it can't be easy. Um, you know, everything that's good out there that you want to achieve is on the other side of hard. And if that's the case, then it's, if, if they're going to be successful and be mentally tough, it's got to be challenging. It's got to be hard. I think sometimes failing is just fine. So if they're supposed to make a time, they don't make a time. And then you have to talk to them about body language. Um, because body language, you know, we all know body language screams. Um, but if they have bad body language, then it's very simple. They're showing everybody how soft they are and how not mentally tough they are. And so you need to talk to them about it. And so you, and you need to visit with them on the front end. Hey, when you're, when people have, not you, but when people have bad body language, they're showing everybody how soft they are. Am I not right? And they agree. And then, yeah, coach. And then so when they do it, they're showing themselves that they are soft. Um, and so that's why I think you can do it on the front end is talk to them, challenge them, talk to them about um, their body language. And then I think it's huge is to film it. Uh, if you're worried about one kid and worried about his softness or worried about his body language, film him during practice. Don't film the whole practice, just film him. And then go back and watch, maybe get a collection of, not highlights, but of lowlights on, on him showing bad body language or, or being soft mentally. Um, and then film it and show him because nobody wants to look like that. So I think if you show him that, I, I think that helps. But I think challenging, um, in, in different drills, mental toughness drills, shooting free throws at the end of practice, shooting free throws, um, everybody's on the line, trying to beat the pro. Um, every time you make a three, it counts one. Every time you miss, it gets two for the pro. And so be down. Um, who can be down uh, 10 to 18 where you've got to go 11 for your next 13 from three? Or you lose, you know, some guys can do that mentally and some guys can't. But trying to help them get mentally tough by doing those types of competitive situations. Um, but I just, you know, and when they are, when they start showing some, some toughness and making a free throw late, you know, every competitive drill that we're going to do this year, we're going to put someone at the foul line if that team wins. Even if it's a four on four competition, if that team wins, somebody on their team has to go up there and step and make a free throw. That's being mentally tough when you're fatigued and having to make a free throw. So in turn, mentally tough teams win because mentally tough teams make free throws at the end of games and are ready to take care of business at the end of the games. So 
try to catch them doing something good, catch them having a good moment in mental toughness, and um, but just challenge during practice, and um, I would use that video an awful lot. Hope this helps. Um, appreciate your time. Take care. Joe's Decision. Unleashed Potential. Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Joe's Decision. Unleashed Potential. This month's question is, how do you improve a player's toughness? There's different ways that, that we really work a lot on improving toughness in a player. I think the first thing that you need to do is you need to show them what that looks like. We talk about this all the time, whether it's hard work or whether it's toughness. I think with today's player, you have to show them what toughness looks like. So one of the ways that we do that is we have a program that we run for uh, four weeks straight called our toughness program. And in that toughness program, we will have specific drills where you're actually competing against another player, whether it's ball handling, whether it's, you know, having to rip the ball out of, out of someone's hands and try and score with it, uh, going one on one, uh, to start to play. The person who rips the ball out of the other person's hands is on offense. The other person is on defense. I think by doing things like that, game situations like that, that's how you improve or increase a player's mental toughness. I have a saying that I, that I got from someone that I use a lot that I, that I like to say to players is everyone, everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. Well, you have to show them what it's like to be a beast and what beasts actually do, you know, to improve their mental toughness. The, the other saying that, that I like to use, you know, with players, a lot is I got this from my my great friend and mentor Kevin Eastman. Uh, he talks about getting over mad, sad, and hard. Yeah, you know sometimes you know if you want to be a great player, you got to get over those things. And sometimes things are hard, and sometimes things are tough. So we have you know in in all the drills and all the the game situations that we do in player development, we have some form of competing. And I think competing is one of the greatest ways to increase a person's mental toughness. When, when we're, when we're doing that, I have us one shooting drill where they have to start in a corner and work their way to the other corner. If they don't make enough shots at each spot, they go back to start. It's a drill that I, that I, I got from uh, watching JJ Reddick for many years when he was down to Duke and, and in the NBA that he used to do, they used to do with him all the time down to Duke where, you know, it, it really increases your mental toughness. It's very game like because it's a game situation where is yet at the end of the, the other side of the court, if you need to make one more basket, one more shot, and you don't do that, then you go back to start. So that's a natural way in a, in a player development situation to improve a person's mental toughness. So that's what we try to do when we're working with players is first of all, to get them to understand and see what toughness looks like. You know, again, whether it's a ball handling drill, whether it's a shooting drill, whether it's a 1v1 or 2v2, whatever the case may be, that's really, the, you know, the prime way that, that we increase a person's mental toughness is just by putting them in situations where they have to learn to be tough. And, and again, until they see that and actually do that in practice or in a player development situation, then maybe they don't understand what that is. You know, kids say all the time, well, I'm working hard or I am playing tough. But unless you show them what that looks like, I don't really think they understand what, what toughness is. And, and it's a process. You know, and again, we talk about this all the time. That's a learned behavior. You have to learn to play tough. You know, it's not something that someone naturally does. I just think when you're put in those situations, uh, we have the, we have another drill that we do where you have to own the line to the basket, the straight line. So we'll put a player up against you side by side and have them try to push you off that line on your way to the basket to, for a finish. And that's, that's learning how to play tough. Whether, whether, you know, you're having to stay in that straight line, we say owning the line versus renting the line and being pushed off the line. That's an aspect of, of how you help a player develop mental toughness. And again, whether they're competing against themselves by having to make a certain amount of shots or competing against another player, uh, we're very big on competition that that teaches toughness. And, you know, a person's going to lose only so many times before they realize, hey, I have to get tougher. If I want, if I want to win this competition, if I want to win this drill, then I have to play tougher. So 
uh, again, it's a process. It's something that has to be learned. It has to be taught. It has to be shown. Um, that are basically my ideas on improving uh, mental toughness. Lee Swanson, Bunker Hill High School, Claremont, North Carolina. So the question is, how do we make our kids uh, more mentally tough? I, I think the first thing uh, with any program, with a group of kids, uh, athletes, is, is try to talk about what exactly it is, define what mental toughness is, what the characteristics of it are. Uh, and then, like you would teach anything else, try to educate them. Um, we do a lot of short readings and videos. We uh, you know, bring in speakers or, or have speakers put up. And um, we really just try to stress what those things are. And then when they're not being mentally tough, point them out. Sometimes we can be really hard about that. Sometimes we can not be as hard depending on the situation. Um, but I feel like your kids really understand it when they start calling it out. Um, and there's a, there's a ton of good resources out there. Um, Josh Medcalf, we're big on the chop wood, carry water, things uh, of that nature. Um, we do a lot of what drives winning stuff. Uh, we've got some really good resources. So once you kind of hone in on your kids on what mental toughness is and, and, and really are honest with them uh, as individuals and with the team when necessary, uh, they can kind of start holding each other accountable. And, you know, you can just look at them and say, hey, you're not being very mentally tough. And a lot of times it makes my job easier um, because they realize that and I don't have to, to get on them as hard and they can, they can snap back out of and get to the desired behavior or – um, you know, back into the game uh, without having to come out or, or pout or, or go through some stuff. And some kids are better than others, and, and every kid's running their own race. But I certainly think the more mentally tough your team can be, uh, the better chance you have to win uh, tight games. Thanks for checking out this month's Hoopheads Podcast Roundtable. We'll be back next month with another question for our all-star lineup of coaches. Thanks for listening to the Hoopheads Podcast, presented by Head Start Basketball. 